we discuss the gifts of word of wisdom, word of knowledge and discerning of spirits. We provide a working definition of each, examples from the Old and the New Testament, some examples of their application on how each is received and some guidance on how they are to be properly exercised. All right. Why don't we just uh, rise up and make our declaration this morning and then we will get into God's word. So if you brought your Bible, let's uh, hold it all up high up together and let's say this out loud, bold and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to us. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word, I believe His word, and I live by His word. Christ is my master, and to Him, I am in absolute surrender in Jesus' name. Amen. Please say hello to the person, people next to you, behind you, in front of you, beside you. Shake hands. And uh, then you may be seated. Let's turn our Bibles, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Over the last few weeks, we've started our study on the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, this is our third Sunday in this series. We'll probably continue on for several more Sundays uh, as we talk about various aspects of the gifts of the Spirit. Let's read this passage together, and then we will uh, study some of these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and uh, we'll read verses 1 through 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. The Apostle Paul writes here, now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus cursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries by the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another, the, another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the workings of, working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. So we've been taking time to examine these gifts, the gift of the Holy Spirit mentioned here. Uh, we're studying each of these nine, that's what we're going to start doing, study each of these nine and see how they flow and how they operate through each of us as believers. You know, the Bible tells us here in verse 1 that God does not want us to be ignorant of these gifts. So he wants us to know, be trained, be equipped with these gifts and be uh, available, actually making use of them in our daily lives. So all of us as believers must be, you know, familiar and just available to God and, and flowing in and manifesting these gifts. God does not want us to be ignorant about these, these things. I just want to quickly review a few things we've already said in the past, just to remind us of this, that, you know, the gifts of the Spirit are available to all of us as believers. So it's not just, you know, for some people. All the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are available to each and every believer. The gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. And He's in us. He's in you. So all these gifts can flow through your life. We also said, just as an illustration, that the gifts of the Spirit are like a toolbox. So if you call an electrician home and uh, he comes home to fix a problem, 
you know, he can come in his uniform, nice blue shirt, blue tie, I mean, <laughs> nice uniform. He can come with a certificate. I've been trained in some training school on how to be an electrician. Very good. It builds your confidence. But if he doesn't come with a toolbox, he's not going to be able to be of any help. But there's one more requirement. He must come with this toolbox, but he must also know how to use the tools inside it. <laughs> So all of us are believers. We have the Spirit of God dwelling in us. Many of us baptized in the Holy Spirit and all of that. Wonderful. We've got the toolbox, but we don't know how to use the tools inside. So that's the whole purpose of this series, to get us equipped. And some of us have been already flowing in it. That's very wonderful. Just encourage you to do more. And for some of us, this may be a starting point, And that's great. Let's, just, let's all get started. And you know, if we all engage in touching people's lives with these gifts, we will have a powerful impact. And I want us to understand that these gifts are, can be used to serve anybody, believers or non-believers. Okay? So don't just say it's only to serve another believer. No. God can use, work through you to use any of these gifts to serve even a, totally an atheist or you know, an unbeliever. Anyone. He can just flow through you. So be open. Like we said last Sunday, the gifts of the Spirit can manifest anywhere, anytime. So it doesn't have to be in a church setting like this. It could be out on the streets. It could be in a restaurant, in a classroom, in a college, in a workplace. Anywhere, anytime, these gifts can flow through your life and mine. We just need to be open. It all comes out of our communion with God, our relationship with God, relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And uh, uh, just to remind us, I know... We said three things. To be available to the Holy Spirit, we must pursue love, desire the gifts, and step out in. Let's say it all together. Pursue. Desire the gifts. Step out in. faith. Let's say it again. Pursue love. Desire the gifts. And step out in faith. Three simple things. That means love the people. This gift is not about you. It's about them. It's about them feeling loved. It's about them knowing that there's a God in heaven who loves them. So love, pursue love, be motivated by love. God, I love them. I love the people. I love this person that I'm talking to, whatever. Just out of love, pursue love. Then desire the gifts. You must, you, you know, I must desire. God, is there something I can say that will help this person? Is there something I can do that will help this person? That's desiring for the gifts. Pursue love, walk in love, desire the gifts, and then step out in faith. So that's the risk-taking part. Right? You take, take risks, and we'll talk more about that later. All right. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that these gifts must be tested. In other words, you know, because we are all learning how to flow in the things of God and learning how to flow in the Spirit, you know, we won't get it right all the time. We'll make mistakes. We're just human vessels. The gift is perfect. Uh, the giver of the gift is perfect, but the vessel is not. So there's nothing wrong with the giver of the gift, the Spirit of God. Nothing wrong with the gift. But the channel could sometimes be a little tainted. And so uh, when it comes through, it can come out in, in some wrong ways. And so that's why on the other side, we have to test the gifts and just validate it before you receive it. So the testing part also needs to be done. We'll talk about that later. So... Uh, just to review two more things here, uh, what we did last Sunday is for instructional purposes, we categorized these nine gifts into three groups. Uh, the first group we call as revelation gifts, gifts that reveal something that we don't already know, the gift of the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Another category we call as vocal gifts, gifts that say something, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. And then we had a third category called the power gifts, gifts that do something, that make something happen, the gift of faith, gifts of healings, workings of miracles. So as we study together, uh, we will study them in these three groupings. Now remember, this is only for instruction purposes. You will not be tested on this in an exam. Okay, it's just for us to be able to communicate them uh, to us. When you're at the pearly gates, no one is going to ask you, tell me the three revelation gifts. Yeah. No one is going to ask you that. So, you know, don't feel stressed out about it. It's just for us to share and teach. Um, the other thing we also did last Sunday was to just explain how the Holy Spirit communicates to us. So we use this little diagram. And again, this will not come to you in any exam. 
<laughs> See, it's just for instruction purposes. We talked about the five senses. That they're the natural senses, you know, what we have in our body, the natural physical senses. Uh, information comes through these senses, comes into our soul, but we process it, then we decide to say something or act on it. Similarly, we said our spirit has five, at least five senses. We call them spirit senses. Uh, what you can see, what you can feel in your spirit, what you can hear in your spirit, uh, what you can taste and smell in your spirit. And we've given biblical references for all of these. The Holy Spirit uses these five channels to impart information to you, to talk to you, to witness to you, testify to you. So you pick it up in your spirit, then you process it in your mind, you think about it, you analyze it, you decide what to do, how to do, what you're going to do, and then you or release it, whether it's a word or whether it's something you need to do to bless somebody. So we encouraged all of us, you know, train your spirit to pick up what the spirit is saying. It's not that the Holy Spirit is not speaking. He is. It's just that on our side, our reception has to improve. We've got to be more receptive, more attentive. And then we'll be able to pick up what the Spirit is saying and release it. So this morning, we're going to move forward from there. We're going to talk about the first grouping of gifts, which are the revelation gifts. I want us to take some time to explain the three gifts. The gift of the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. Uh, for each gift, we will do this, just to be a little systematic. We'll first give a definition of that gift. And again, by, by giving a definition, I want us to understand that God is bigger than all our definitions. Right? So every definition we give, I want you to understand, is very, very finite. We're going to try to capture in a simple sentence what that gift is all about. But actually, that gift is much bigger than the definition. Okay? In reality, God does much more. So we'll give it a little definition. We'll talk about ex a couple of examples of the Old Testament, a couple of examples of the New Testament. We'll talk about operations, which is how do you use this gift? How can it be used in our day-to-day -day life? Uh, what are some examples? And again, it's going to be a finite set. But really, God can use the gifts anywhere at any time. And then we'll talk about some guidelines. You know, how do you receive it? How does it normally come? And how do you share it? How do you release that gift? Again, I want to say, these are some simple things that we can talk about. But in, in, in reality, there's, there's, there's much more, uh, that uh, many more ways in which God works. And we just have to open ourselves to it. So let's get started. Let's talk about the word of wisdom. What is the gift of the word of wisdom? It is a supernatural impartation of a piece of wisdom, of God's infinite wisdom. So God is infinite in his wisdom. He's only giving you a word. He didn't even say, I'll give you a sentence. It's a word. <laughs> it's a, not a sentence of wisdom. It's a word of wisdom. Such a small part. A tiny part of his wisdom being imparted to you at a moment supernaturally it comes into you a word of wisdom God gives you a part of his wisdom a piece of his infinite wisdom and it can be used for many things it can be used to solve a problem it can be used to know what course of action to take what decisions to make it can it can reveal something about what's coming up in the future. It can be used to release creative, artistic, scientific, intelligent expression of concepts and ideas. So all of this happens uh, through that gift of the word of wisdom. Now, as I was just trying to emphasize, it's a word, meaning it's a small part that God gives you. Now, this is different. The gift of the word of wisdom is different from acquired wisdom. So acquired wisdom comes through learning, comes through experience. You've gone through lots of experiences. You've read a lot of stuff. And, you know, oh, that's acquired wisdom. You've got it. That's good. And that's important. And we have a place, a time and a place to use that. And we must receive counsel from people who have wisdom and, and accept the counsel and walk with it and all of that. It has its place there. But what we're talking about is a gift of the word of wisdom. Supernaturally imparted. That comes to you. It's not based on your learning or training or so on but God just gives it to you and then you can serve people you can bless people with it let's look at a few examples think about Joseph who interpreted Pharaoh's dreams and then he told him he not only interpreted the dreams you know seven fat cows representing seven years of plenty and seven lean cows representing seven years of famine he not only told him hey that's what's going to happen but then he gave him a solution this guy was sitting in prison in the morning and now he's telling Pharaoh how to run the great Egyptian empire. 
Say, Pharaoh, this is what you need to do. Every year, you save up 20% of what the people grow. And you save that up for 20, uh, the first seven years. At the end of the seven years, this is what you do. You start selling it back to the people. I mean, people, you know, and it just gives a whole solution to the problem. He didn't pass the IAS, IAS exam. But he's telling Pharaoh what to do. A gift of the word of wisdom. Now, let me make a disclaimer here. The gift of the word of wisdom does not mean you shouldn't study. <laughs> or doesn't mean you shouldn't get an education. Please get all the education, all the learning, whatever field you are, please do that. Okay, don't go out and say, counselor, qualification, gift of word of wisdom. <laughs> Don't do that. You study your, you know, your psychology accounts or whatever. You, you know, you do all that. But this is to add to and come alongside whatever, you know, God has called you to do in life. Think about uh, Bezalel, the man Bezalel in Exodus 31. You know, he was some guy who uh, in those days there were no, you know, design schools, none of those schools. The Holy Spirit comes on him and God says, Bezalel, I've given you the ability to design artistic works uh, in jewelry, in wood, and in everything else that is needed for the tabernacle. What's his qualification? Holy Spirit came, has come on you. Go do the job. Okay? And he, he comes up with all the design that was needed for the tabernacle. Think about David. We know David as a shepherd boy. We know David as a musician. We know David as a warrior. But nobody would think that David would design a building, would be an architect. And yet you see that the Holy Spirit came on David. And he designed the temple that Solomon was going to build. That was the only building he architected. But that ability came through a gift of the word of wisdom. The Holy Spirit gave it to him. And David said, I've done this drawing by the Holy Spirit. Don't ask me to do a drawing for any other building. No, that second part was just made up. right? So David was inspired by the Holy Spirit to come up with this. Um, think about Daniel. Uh, interpreting dreams, foretelling coming events by the gift of the word of wisdom. In the New Testament, you have several examples. I'll mention a few. The wise men, you know, King Herod tried to trap them. He says, you know, you go find out where Jesus is, come back and tell me. But the angel of God said, don't go back. Go the other way. That word saved them and the Lord Jesus. To Joseph said, hey, take the baby. Go away to Egypt. Preserve the child. Uh, Herod is going to do something. You know, uh, the people, uh, the Pharisees, they were all after Jesus. They wanted to trap Jesus. So one day they came to him and they said, Jesus, you know, you're teaching great. You're really wise, everything. We have a simple question. Very simple. Should we pay taxes to Caesar? Simple question. Should we pay taxes to Caesar? But that was a trick question. Because if he said yes, you have to pay, then they say, oh, he's an undercover Roman agent. Now he's here to get us all under the grip of the Romans. If he said no, then they'll hand him to the Roman soldiers. Hey, look, somebody is here, is about to revolt against Caesar. So he couldn't say yes, he couldn't say no. So what does Jesus do? He says, hey, bring me a coin. Whose face is on it? Caesar. It's okay. Give to Caesar. What is Caesar's? Give to God. What is God's? That was his answer. Right? A word of wisdom. Just got him out of that situation. Paul, when he wanted to know, you know where to go to do ministry next, he was in the area of Galatia. He thought I should go into Asia. But, uh, uh, but the Holy Spirit said, no, don't go to Asia. And then he had a vision. It says, you go into Macedonia. So the God giving him direction. This is where you need to go. Go there. That's where the field is ripe. That's where it's open. That's where I want you to be. Or Paul, when he and his people were caught in the, in the ship. And they were in the middle of a storm. And uh, first of all, they didn't listen to him. Not to set sail. They still set sail. They got into trouble. But then an uh, angel of the Lord came and told Paul, this is what's going to happen. You're going to lose the ship. But no life will be saved. So be prepared for it. And he tells the people, hey. Uh, you guys didn't listen to me when we said sail, but here's the next step. Next thing that's going to happen, the ship will be lost, but lives will be saved. Telling them, you know, what's going to happen. This is how you need to be prepared. So there are several examples you can see in the Bible. What are some of the day-to-day -day operations you and I would, can experience to give the word of wisdom? Again, there's not a complete list. One would be in counseling. Let's say you're talking to somebody. 
and they come to you, they're sharing their problems uh, and all of that. And you're like, God, what do I tell this person? How do I help them uh, you know, in their situation? God can give you a word of wisdom, just the right thing you need to tell them. It could be the ministry of the word. When you're preaching and teaching the word, there's so much you can preach from the Bible. Genesis to Revelation, 66 books, so many chapters. So every moment you're saying, God, what is the word I need to bring to the people? And God will give you. Speak this word, say this word, and, and, and that's the message that will be just impact the hearts uh, and the lives of people. In interpreting dreams, sometimes we have dreams and, uh, you know, how do I interpret it? Uh, how do I interpret those dreams? And, and, and at the moment, as you're trying to, you know, just give the interpretation, the word of wisdom comes and says, this is the meaning of the dream. And, and you release uh, uh, the, the word of wisdom. Um, solving business and workplace problems. So you, you might be sitting... Uh, in your office and uh, there be problems there. You ask the Lord, Lord, give me a word of wisdom. How do I address this? In various situations of life that you might personally face. God, what do I do? Ask God for a word of wisdom. It could be for yourself. It could be to help somebody else. Ask God for it. Deciding about the future. Uh, or coming up with a design in any field, creating solutions in any field, uh, even forecasting, predicting. Yes, you have data and definitely look at data and work with it. But how do you elicit the right information to forecast, to predict, depend on the gift of the word of wisdom. Amen? Are you with me? So this is available to all of us anywhere, anytime, and, and, and accessible to us. You just pursue love, desire the gifts. And step out in faith, uh, you know, desire for God to give this to you. And he, you'll have this, this happening in your life. Now, uh, how, how is a word of wisdom received? How do you actually get this happening? How does that word of wisdom come into you? And I'm just sharing a few things that we are aware of at this point. There will be many other ways that God will work in your life and mine. Uh, some of the things I've experienced very often is a quickening of the scripture. Suddenly a worse uh, a portion of scripture, something out of scripture just comes alive. You may not be physically with the Bible. You may be just walking around somewhere, but just comes alive in your spirit. And God is quickening that to your heart uh, to address a situation you're facing or to give a word to somebody uh, who's come to you for some help or advice. And, and so a uh, quickening of the word uh, of scripture. Uh, sometimes it comes to knowing inside. Uh, in, in your spirit sense of hearing the, the, a word or a sentence um, or even a large amount of information just comes up in your spirit and you just know, hey, in a, in a, in a moment that information has come into your spirit, you know it's not something you've acquired from somewhere, but it's been given to you at that moment for that particular situation. Sometimes you may see a word, words or sentences. You actually see it with the eyes of your spirit, a word, maybe several words, and you go with it. Uh, sometimes it could be inspired, unpremeditated speaking. You start talking and all of these wisdom words start coming out. You're so impressed. You say, God, I need to take notes. <laughs> Where did all that come from? You know, my mother would be really impressed. She heard me speak right now. <laughs> you know, all that wisdom comes out. And you're like, I know I didn't read that somewhere. I know I wasn't taught it anywhere. It was just coming out. It's unpremeditated, but it's inspired. It's the gift of the word of wisdom is flowing out of your mouth at that moment. There are times God speaks through dreams and visions. He gives you answers uh, to situations you may be going through or somebody else may be going through. You're facing your organization. You receive it in dreams and visions. Angels can, can appear like they did to Daniel, Joseph, and Paul, bringing a message and telling them what to do. I never had it happen to me personally, but we see it in Scripture, and so we stay open to that. Now, when you receive a word of wisdom, how do you share it? Here are some guidelines. First of all, do not force, compel, or demand action from somebody. Now, when you're sharing a word of wisdom, just share it lovingly and say, hey, uh, this is what I feel we can do or you can do, or this is what, you know, what I think is the right course of action. Do not compel them to do it. Don't say, God told me and you have to do it. No, it's not right. Always present it lovingly to them. Let them receive it. Let them test it. Let them feel, uh, see if it, it you know, bears witness with their spirit where they can go with it. This past week, we were in Varanasi, and so I'll just share a couple of examples uh, from that. Uh, uh, we were as a team ministering, so, uh, you know, six of us were there. There was uh, about 250, 200 some youths they were being ministered to. There are about 200 people in the leaders' conference being ministered to. So I'll just share some of my personal experiences. I'm sure the others on the team had their own wonderful experiences, but I have the mic, they don't, so 
I'll just show what some of the things. You know, one of the things is praying. Uh, uh, for example, a young girl was, or a young lady was there in front of me. I don't know her age or anything. But I was just praying, and as I was praying for her, suddenly the word nursing just came up in my spirit. Okay? So now it's a word. I'm seeing that word very clearly, nursing. So I just finished praying, and then I asked, you know, what do you want to do? So I didn't say, God said, be a nurse. No. Right? I know very clearly I saw the word nursing, right? But I'm asking, so when you grow up, what do you want to do? And she said, doctor. For me, like, whoa, that's pretty close. You know, it's like, okay. Then I threw the interpreter. I said, okay, you know, say when I was, I just told her my experience. I said, see, when I'm praying, when I was praying for you, I saw the word nursing come up. So you pray about it and you do whatever God tells you to do. Right? So what am I doing? I know I saw that word, but I'm submitting it to her so that she can prayerfully decide and make that decision. I'm not forcing my word on her life. Amen? So you just leave it like that. Don't say, God said, no, no, doctor is wrong. You must be a nurse. That is wrong. That's manipulation. That's witchcraft. If you step into that, that's actually Witchcraft. Witchcraft controls people's lives. So don't do that. Instead, you say, this is what I felt in my spirit. You pray. You do whatever God tells you to do. So just present it. Secondly, uh, you know, when you give a word of wisdom, clarify and encourage perseverance and diligence that is required. Just because through wisdom you bring a solution to a situation or you bring an answer to a problem doesn't mean that problem is going to be solved and the people can go to sleep. No. It simply means you need to act on it. You've got to persevere. You've got to be diligent about that word to see it fulfilled. So a word of wisdom has to be acted on, has to be followed through with diligence. So you encourage people. right? So now you follow through on it. If you feel bear witness with it, you go and act on it. You follow through on it. Rather than uh, letting people think that, you know, you can sit down and relax and God will just do it by himself. There's an action required to encourage people. And there are times, especially in your office, when you're in a group, in a team, uh, which means there has to be a consensus. You may have felt inspired by God. You may have a very spiritual moment. No example, tomorrow you're sitting in your uh, in the conference room. You have, you know, 10 people on your team. You're all discussing something. You have a very spiritual moment. Now you can't tell anybody, hey guys, I'm having a spiritual moment. No. You know, but you know God's inspiring something. And then you present that. Now, you cannot expect the rest of the people to, you know, you can't tell it like, hey, God gave this to me right now, let's do it. You can't do that. What your responsibility is to present it faithfully. Let the team decide what they're going to do with it. Don't compel agreement on it. Because they need to agree. Or if you're in a boss, you're working for a boss. All you can do is say, boss, he has an idea. Can we pursue? Don't expect him to agree. He will make the decision. He may agree with it. He may not. But don't, uh, you know, force. You're not under pressure to convince others to agree. Just you've done. Be faithful to release that word. Are you with me so far? Right? So a word of wisdom, something that you and I can tap into to bless people's lives, to help them see solutions that they, they probably are not, seeing and it can really help people let's talk about the gift of the word of knowledge what's the gift of the word of knowledge it is an impartation of a peace again a peace of God's infinite knowledge God knows everything past present and future so this word of knowledge is a piece of information about the past or the present that God gives to you it's just a piece of information and it comes into your spirit, and then you do something with it. Most often, you just release it. You speak about it. You release it to somebody. So it's information about the past or the present. Something that's happening right now, something that has just happened. God knows everything. He's giving you a peace. Thank God he doesn't give you everything. <laughs> we won't know what to do with it. He just gives us the peace that we need to help somebody, to bless somebody. One of the main reasons why God gives us words of knowledge is to let somebody know that you are known by God and you're loved by God. That's the main reason. Hey, God knows you. He knows exactly where you are. He knows what has happened in your life. God knows you. God loves you. That's it. It's very impactful that way. Why word of knowledge? God knows you. God loves you. 
piece of information about their life or about their situation, about their circumstance. God knows you. God loves you. Very important. Just that impact it has. Uh, of course, there are others, it serves other purposes. It can inform us about, about what God is doing at that moment. Many times a word of knowledge will go along with the gifts of healings or workings of miracles or something, uh, other gifts. So it tells us what God is doing at that moment. It can also re- reveal problems or situations from the past that God is addressing at the moment. So this is what happened in your life. God is doing this right now for you. So that's the gift of word of knowledge. Now, the gift of the word of knowledge is not, has nothing to do with any information you already know. So like, you know, you don't see somebody Facebook, ah, they were in the party. Yesterday you were at a party. (laughs) It has nothing to do with information you already know. This is supernatural revelation. God reveals by his spirit at that moment a piece of information and just to bless somebody, to minister to somebody. It has nothing to do with any information you already know. Think about some biblical examples. The Old Testament, you know, Samuel and Saul's donkeys. Saul's father's donkeys had been lost. So Saul and his friend have been searching for these donkeys for three days. And finally, Saul says, man, is there a prophet that we can go and ask? Maybe he can help us. And so they get ready to come to meet Samuel, the prophet. But God speaks to Samuel and says, Samuel, so-and-so is coming to meet you. Get ready. He's a person I've chosen to be king. So Saul comes to meet Samuel. Samuel says, hey guy, I want you to meet me up tomorrow. You know, I've got a surprise for you. And by the way, the donkeys you've been searching have already been found. So he knows. It's like, hey, I haven't told you yet why I came. But saw Samuel already knew. And he knew the donkeys were found. Think about uh, Elisha and Gehazi, you know. Naaman comes to Elijah to get healed. Uh, Naaman is healed and he offers lots of money. And Elisha, the man of God, says, no, I don't need anything. Just go home. And Gehazi says, oh, man, that's a free miracle. You know, I need to charge him something. So he runs after uh, Naaman and says, hey, Naaman, Naaman, Naaman. Uh, sorry, my master changed my mind. Uh, he wants, you know, 10 shirts, three cows, four dogs, whatever. You know, <laughs> Give it all to me. And so he takes all of that. He takes all the goods, he puts it off in his house, and he goes and stands next to Elisha, you know, so nothing happened. So Elisha says, hey, um, uh, Gehazi, where have you been? So, no, 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 I just went to attend to some kitchen work, you know, just come back, cooked you a good meal, prophet, you know. And Elisha says, hey, Gehazi, did I see you when you went to meet Naaman, and you got all these things from him? So God revealed that little part of information to Elisha, a word of knowledge. Think about Elisha revealing the battle plans of the king of Syria. So here's the king of Syria. He's in his, in his you know, battle plan room with all his chiefs. And they are planning on how to attack Israel. And uh, every time he goes out, Israel has already taken corrective or evasive action. He's like, man, there must be one of you who's a spy sitting here. And then his, one of his chiefs says, King, it's not a spy, it's the prophet. Elijah is telling the king of Israel everything that you speak in your bedroom. So God giving words of knowledge to that prophet. In knowing what's happening here. And he's revealing that to protect Israel. In the New Testament, you'll have, we have several examples. Think about when the Lord Jesus meets Nathaniel. And the Lord Jesus, you know, Nathaniel is coming up to Jesus and Jesus says, hi Nathaniel, before, when you were standing under the fig tree, when Philip came and called you, I saw you. I go, where were you, Jesus? Now imagine somebody comes up to you and, and you shake hands on the, hey, when you were driving in your so-and-so car with such and such a plate number, I saw you. It was scary, right? That's exactly what happened. Saying, when you were standing under the fig tree, and Philip came and called you, I saw you. And Nathan says, you, know, you truly must be of the Lord. And, 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 and so just that one word changed his life. He became a follower of the, of the Lord Jesus. Think about Jesus, Jesus at, the, at the well in Samaria. Here comes a woman who came to draw, comes to draw water. Jesus engages in a conversation with her. And over that, he says, go call your husband. And she says, I have no husband. He says, you've said correctly, you've had five husbands. The man you're not with is not your husband. She is shocked. Right? But that changes her whole life. 
See, even though he was revealing something unpleasant from her past, it was redemptive in nature. It was to draw her to the Savior, heal her, make her life whole. So you never do this to hurt anybody, to put anybody down. Every time even God reveals something unpleasant from their past, it is for their healing. There have been times when I'm praying for somebody and I say, you know, this and this happened in your life. But God is healing that. Or healing the wounds. You know, people have done this and this to you. But God is healing that. Why are we saying it's to redeem, to reveal that this is an area in your past that hurt you. But God is bringing healing. It's bringing, it's always redemptive in nature. It's never to destroy somebody. It's never to put them down. Even when if it's, even if it is unpleasant. So there are several examples uh, in the New Testament. So what are some of the operations there? I'll just skip some of these examples and go into the operations. Uh, how can this word of knowledge be used? Like I said, number one, it's to let people know that they are known and loved by God. God loves you. God knows you. He cares about you. Sometimes you get only one, some single thing that happened in their lives. And, 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 and you let them know, hey, God loves you. You are loved by God. I remember sometime back, you know, in this one meeting, we are having a meeting. And uh, the worship was over. I came forward. And at that moment, I said something like this. I said, you know, there's somebody here, you've just walked in from a, a, a business meeting. And you just walked in right now. And you're about, you had committed to giving a huge amount of money. But God does not want you to do that. I had no idea. The worship was over. I'm coming. I'm not watching on who's coming in. And even if people are coming in, I wouldn't know from where they're coming. At that moment, while I'm speaking those words, a person, a man is walking in. And he's actually coming from a business meeting where he has committed to giving a certain sum of money. And he's hearing these words. Would I know that at all? I would not know. I have no idea. But out of the meeting, he comes and tells me, no, I came from the meeting. I was committed to this, but I've received the word you've just released. And it protected that man from making, I'm losing that sum of money. So it lets people know God knows you exactly where you are. God loves you. You know, he knows that particular moment in time, your situation or things about the past, what's happened, and they just feel loved by God. It can help solve a problem, maybe finding what is lost, maybe finding, revealing what's causing a loss in an organization, maybe somebody stealing money, whatever. It, just, it can bring those kinds of solutions to problems. It can bring conviction and repentance by lovingly addressing areas of sin and uh, compromise. You know, you're lovingly addressing it, and it brings redemption, uh, conviction to them. Uh, it can reveal something that's happened in the past that's affecting the present. Uh, it can reveal what God is doing uh, when, you know, ministered along with other gifts. And so, uh, uh, for example, the gifts of healings and the word of knowledge. God is healing this part of, uh, of the body. God is do releasing this kind of miracle. It builds faith in people's lives and they receive that miracle. So how is the word of knowledge received? Again, this is just... Some common ways, uh, and, um, and then I'll just run through so that you and I can be alert to these things. Uh, you will hear or see words, sentences, or information. So, like, God or the Holy Spirit can use any of our spirit senses, what you see, hear, feel. So, the words will come up. You will see sentences coming up, uh, information coming to you through your spirit into your uh, mind. Words, or you will see words. Uh, for example, this in Varanasi I'm ministering, the, in the leaders' conference, there are people sitting there. So there's a lady sitting at the third, I don't know, third or fourth row. And I, this was ministry time, so I'm just looking around, you know, anything. So when I'm looking at them, I'm not looking at their outer person. I'm just seeing, do I see something in the spirit? So I'm just kind of scanning the crowd. Then suddenly my eyes comes on this lady, and I see the word children. So I say, that lady, could you please stand up? Uh, are you working with children? I'm not saying God showed me you're working. I'm just saying, I know I see the word children written on her. Are you working with the children? Then she says, yes. Now, that's not too hard of a guess. I mean, you know, you could even guess something like that. But we are not doing guesswork. You're trying to listen to the Spirit. And when you see something, then you are acting on it, right? So I saw this word on her, written on her, children. So then I ask, through, of course, through the interpreter, are you working with children? Yes. So can you come forward? So there's a reason why God highlighted that in her life. I need to minister. Now, when I say come forward, I have no idea. This is a secret. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. Right? I have no idea. You know, you pretend like you know everything, but you really don't. That's why you're stepping out in faith. Right? 
So I said, could you please come? Now, I saw the first thing. I saw the word uh, she's highlighted. You know, and God, I know God wants to minister to her. But what God wants to do next, I have no idea. But you're stepping out in faith, right? So I said, please come here. She comes forward and she tells everybody, yeah, this is what I'm doing. She's working with children. She explains some of her ministry. And uh, she's taking care of these, you know, uh, I mean, it's a handicapped children. She's providing care for them, et cetera, et cetera. All that she describes. Okay, fine. And meantime, I'm saying, God, what do you want to do next? Right? So, okay. All right. Once she's finished talking, I said, okay, let's pray for her. The moment I say, let's pray for her, start praying for her, suddenly the word Hannah comes from the Bible. Like, that not premeditated, but it's a word coming up in my spirit. Right? I'm giving you all the inside secrets. <laughs> How to minister. Right? The word Hannah comes. So then I begin to say to her, I said, okay, the Lord says you are like Hannah in the Bible and your prayers and your work. And as I'm speaking, the rest of the information is beginning to come out. Okay? I haven't even thought of all of this. But remember, as you move out in faith, God is releasing that information. So then I begin to say to her, you know, you're like hand in the Bible. And God wants us to encourage you today, saying that your prayers and your work are raising up Samuels. The children that you will work with will be like Samuels, who will have influence in the land. Now that was totally unpremeditated. But for her, at that moment, it's a simple word that will bring encouragement. You understand it? Right? So... You just step out in faith, and as as and, and it comes through uh, hearing, seeing words. Sometimes it comes through inner impression. Sometimes it comes through pictures and images. You see something happening. Last Sunday at the end of the service, I just said, you know, I was seeing somebody playing the piano, and I was like, okay, God, piano, so many anybody can play the piano. So I was like, anyway, but I had to be faithful. Sometimes you just have to take risks. You have to be stupid, willing to be stupid because it's not about you, it's about them. And it's about God loving on them. So I'm just saying, okay, uh, I see somebody playing the piano. And then as I start talking about it, the other things begin to emerge from that story. Right? Begin to say, and there was one lady put up her hand. She came, she shared. This is, it meant something to her. Somebody else was watching life. It meant something to them at that moment. Right? And sometimes you have to take risks because you, it's not about you, it's, it, but it can mean something to somebody. Amen? Sometimes I've done as crazy things as like in the service of saying, somebody has come here right after going to the police station. And I'm like, man, these are believers. <laughs> but I said that. So you've come to this service. You've come here right after you've gone to the police station. I want you to come and meet me after the service. And three guys came. Everyone, pastor, we went to the police station. And we came right to the service after the police station. I wouldn't know that in my own. Right? But God reveals. You have a picture of something. I had a picture of the police station. People going in and then coming here. So it's a sequence of images. And you just declare. You just say it. You're taking a risk. It's not about you. It's about them. That God wants to show them. I know where you're at. And I know I care about. I want you to know I care about your situation. Amen. So then you can minister to them. And at that personal level. You say God what else do you want to say. So you might, it might come as pictures. Or sequence of imagination. Sometimes it will come as physical sensation. Something that you personally experience. There are times. When I can feel something physically in my body. And I know I don't have a problem in that area. But that sensation is because God wants to do something for people. In in those parts of the body. So I just call that out. I say, you know, this part of the body, this part of the body. And that can come sometimes through phys physical sensations in my own body. Or it may be pictures I see, uh, parts of the body highlighted. And so I say, call that out. Because God is doing something in that area. And God wants us to build faith so that you can receive healing. So it could come through your own physical senses, then through inspired utterances, sometimes through dreams. Now dreams is a fun part because you're doing nothing but sleep. And it all comes through. You know, there are some Sunday mornings that come here and I say this, 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 and it sounds great, but it came in a dream. I was doing nothing. It, you know, and God just showed it in a dream. So I can come here and I can just talk about it as though you know, it was so real, but really no sweat at all. It came in a dream and I could just speak it and share that. 
Of course, there are times when God can reveal words of knowledge through angel messengers. Sometimes God can remind you of a personal experience or somebody else that you know or our name or something that, that, that comes up and then you just step out on it and, and, and you release that. Um, it could come in many other ways, inspired writing or divine setups and, and so on. And so God releases these things in your spirit. If you and I are sensitive, we pick up on it and we minister to people. Minister to people. And it can bless them. It can let them know God knows you. God cares about you. Now, how do you share a word of knowledge? Like I said earlier, be loving and gentle in what you share. Right? Try not to say, God showed me you have a problem in your back. You know, don't say like, just say, ask them, do you have a problem in your lower back? I say, oh yeah, I say, I have. They say, can I pray for you? Pray. And if they're well, they're all right, then they'll ask you, hey, how did you know that? Then you tell them, you know, I believe the Lord Jesus speaks and this is how I got it. Right? Rather than going and saying, God told me and you, you know, just make it so spooky, be simple. Right? Just be simple. Speak lovingly. Your goal is to draw people, not to push people away from God. Uh, be clear and specific as what is being revealed to you. Sometimes God will give you a name. He might give you some other specific thing. Be clear. Be very specific. This is what I'm seeing. And you be clear and specific uh, according to what is revealed to you. Then validate. So ask people, is it right? So many times I ask people, raise your hand. Why? We want to validate. Is it right? Is it wrong? Are you correctly hearing from God? Are you not? So you ask them, am I saying, what I'm, what I'm saying to you, is it right? Be willing to find out yes or no. Or get people to show their hands. And you know, the wrong approach is, hey, I'm right, you're wrong. You're not listening properly. No. They can't be wrong if it's something happened in their lives. I mean, unless they have forgotten it. Uh, sometimes it can happen, or sometimes people are feeling too shy. I've had many occasions when people come to me after says, Pastor, I did put my hand up, but actually it was me, Pastor. <laughs> Last Sunday I was in East, and one lady came up to me. I think she felt very guilty. <laughs> she came to me and said, Pastor, you remember last year <laughs> I was in the weekend school, Pastor, and you called this out, but I was afraid to come. Can you please pray for me today? Now, this is like <laughs> several months ago. <laughs> Sure. You know, so sometimes they think those things can happen where uh, people are shy or they're afraid to acknowledge something that, that has been called out or that you've been speaking to in their lives. That's okay. You just go on because it's not about you. It's about them and it's about God working in their lives. But as far as possible, try and validate what you're saying just to correct yourself and to make sure that you are hearing correctly. Uh, take risks out of love for people. Be willing to make yourself feel like a fool. It's okay. I'm going to take risks because God wants that person uh, to be touched. It's not about my reputation anymore. I am dead, gone. It's okay if I look like a fool. It's okay if I look wrong, but I'm willing to take risks because God wants to reach out and touch somebody. And it's okay to make mistakes. We are all learning how to hear accurately from God. Like I said here, there's nothing wrong with God's gift. It's us channels that are learning how to hear correctly. Are you with me so far? Can you hold on for another 15 minutes? We'll talk about the third one. Okay? So just tell your neighbor, just a little bit more longer. Just. <laughs> all right, let's talk about discerning of spirits. Now, this is very interesting. The word discern means two things. Discern means to see into. Discern also means to tell the difference between good and bad. Discern, right? So the gift of discerning of spirits. So it has to do with spiritual things. Helps God opens your eyes at that moment to see into the hearts of people or to see into the realm of the spirit. When I say the realm of the spirit, there could be angelic activity, things that God is doing. There could be also demonic activity, what the devil is doing. So... You're able to see into the hearts of people or you're able to see into the realm of the spirit to know whether it's from God, whether it's not from God, whether it's good, whether it's bad. What is God doing or the devil's doing? You with me? Discern. To see into and to tell the difference. And it's a gift of the discerning of spirits. It's a gift given to you in a moment of time to help you see this. It's different from the gift of from discernment. Discernment is something you and I develop over time. That means the ability to 
uh, you know, see what's right and wrong, tell the difference. Through our learning, through our experience, through our study, through, you know, uh, uh, our journey with God, we uh, have some ability to discern. This is right, this is wrong. So we're not talking about discernment because discernment is something that's acquired. We're talking about the gift of the discerning of spirits. That means in a moment of time, God helps you see. It is also different from the gift of suspicion. Some of us have the gift of suspicion. We suspect everything, judge everything, we are critical of everything. Nobody can pass our test. Nobody has to this day passed our test. <laughs> yeah. It is not the gift of suspicion. Oh, he must be up to this, you know, relax. That's different. We're talking about the gift of the discerning of spirits. Seeing into the hearts of people or seeing into the realm of the spirit. And this is very, uh, you know, useful, uh, especially when you want to determine if something is of God or not of God. If somebody comes to talk to you, uh, they, they, you know, they, they're talking to you, all kinds of things. But God suddenly says, hey, all this looks nice on the outside, but his heart is wrong. Be careful. Don't engage with this person. Don't sign the contract. Don't get into partnership with him. Uh, stay away from this. Don't, don't let him get too close to you. I mean, these kinds of things. God warns, warns you uh, through the gift of the discerning of spirits uh, to discern, uh, uh, to determine what is of God, what is not of God, to discern the motives and the intents of people's hearts, uh, to see what the Lord is doing in the activity of angels. God, I thank you, angels are with me here. I know, God, you're with me, and, and you're discerning, you're sensing in the realm of the spirit what's happening. Or, on the other hand, to see what the devil is doing, what kind of evil spirits are operating, especially when you're ministering to people. Sometimes people come to you with some perennial problems, say, like, this is happening, 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 uh, and then... Uh, uh, and, uh, in the natural, you've tried, they've tried everything, it's not solving, and suddenly says, you know, you've got to deal with this evil spirit. This kind of spirit is tormenting that life. Deal with it. And, uh, and, and God, you know, shows you that, and then you take action. So normally, the gift of, the spirit of, discern gift of discerning of spirits requires you to take some action. Do something with what God has revealed to you through this gift. So some examples, and I'll quickly mention a few Elijah's servant, you know, Elijah, Elijah and his servant are in a city and uh, there's an army surrounded the walls, surrounded the city to capture Elijah. And Elijah's servant says, oh, master, what are we going to do now? And um, Elijah says, hey, there are more who are with us than them. And he says, Lord, open his eyes. And God opens his eyes and he sees in the realm of the spirit what's actually there. He sees angels. He sees, uh, you know, uh, the chariots of Israel protecting uh, uh, Elisha the prophet. In the New Testament, for example, uh, when, when the paralytic man was brought to Jesus and Jesus was about to minister to him, he says, son, your sins are forgiven you. Immediately, all the religious people in the room were saying, how dare he forgive sins? I mean, they were thinking inside them. And the Bible says, Jesus, knowing their thoughts, he knew what was going on inside their hearts. And then he addresses that situation. Another example is Jesus and Peter. And this is quite interesting because it happens in one chapter. At the beginning of the chapter, Peter is saying, Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of God. And uh, Jesus says, mm, Peter, my father has revealed that to you. Later on in the chapter, Peter is saying, Jesus, you will not go to the cross. Hmm, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> so he recognizes the source. It's the same person speaking. One time it's the father speaking through him. Another time it's the devil giving him his ideas. And, put, and Jesus is able to discern. You know, one is from God, one is not the other. Right? Another example is on Jesus knowing what the devil is about to do against Peter. He says, Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. So he's discerned. He's seen something uh, in the realm of the spirit. And he says, I know the devil's up to this. And I have prayed for you that, um, that, uh, when, that your faith will not fail. And that when you're restored, you strengthen your brethren. So Jesus sees something in the realm of the spirit. And then he prays. He does something about it. So... What are some operations? Like I said, when you rec to recognize the real source of the problem uh, when you're ministering to people. Same this uh, in Varanasi, uh, people are coming for prayer, and there was this man, this young man, I th young man. He's, be he's been in church for about ten years, so you know he's been in church, and he says, "I believe in Jesus, everything." So he's been going to church and all that. He came for prayer, but he was saying something. My head is hurting, this, that, and all something in the Hindi. I didn't understand everything. So okay, I'll pray for you. So I put my hand up on him and I said, hey, devil, I bind your work on this person. 
that moment, he said, a sharp, big roar came out. So the devil started manifesting. Now, remember, he's been in church for 10 years. He's a believer. Okay. So, but it's not a matter. Yeah. So then I immediately, at that moment, at that moment as he's manifesting, the Holy Spirit saying, okay, here's a familiar spirit, something that is attached to him through the generations, through what has happened in his life. So obviously he's come from, a, must have come from a Hindu background and, and although he's been a believer for 10 years, this thing has still stuck on in his life. Is that manifesting? And then I just, start, of course, what do you do? You rebuke the devils, you command the de devils to leave, you command the spirits to leave, another two or three roars, and he falls on the ground and, you know, stays there for maybe 10 minutes. And then he come, comes back and his whole countenance is changed. Now, at that moment, what happened? The Holy Spirit shows you. Okay, and he came with a problem like, I have a headache, I can't, I'm not saying everybody has a headache. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> he came with a physical problem. Right? I have a headache. I have something and all. You're saying or whatever. But you know in your spirit, you have to deal with an evil. And what kind of spirit you have to deal with. See, I could have prayed a headache prayer. Oh God, <laughs> remove his headache. And he'll go. The devil is hiding. But when the Holy Spirit shows you, this is not a headache problem. This is a spirit problem. What do you do? You deal with the devil. You understand? And then you know what kind of spirit to deal with. But that boy was delivered because the next day his face was so changed. And he was bright. But now he was wondering, okay, what to do next? And I had to speak to his pastor and, you know, Say, please, encourage him, show him you know, what to do and so on. But that's one way that you can, uh, that really helps. You recognize the real source of the problem when you're ministering to people. Uh, recognize true and false ministers. Uh, the spirit of truth, spirit of error. And when you're listening to teaching, uh, sometimes in your spirit said, something is wrong. This is not going forward. They may be quoting from the Bible, but they could be in total error. And she said, no, this is not right. This is not right. Help you understand, help you discern that. Uh, recognizing what God is doing in the realm of the spirit. And then so you position yourself. I know God is moving like this. I need to get in there. God is getting ready to do this. I need to get myself ready. So that's discerning spirits. Help you understand what's happening in the realm of the spirit with God and with the angels and position yourself. Or the opposite. You recognize what the devil is doing. I know that the enemy is planning to an attack in this area. He's coming, going to come against us in this area. So I'm putting up my defenses. I am preempting what the devil would do because I recognize in the spirit what his next step is. And so you could do that. So how do you receive this, this the gift of discerning, discerning of spirits? Just a few more thoughts here. And it come as a check in your spirit. Something is not right. It's a check in your spirit. Be attentive to that. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Be careful. Don't get in, into this. It could be a sense of joy and fellowship in the spirit. That means in your, Holy, in your spirit, you're feeling like, yeah. I connect to this. This is for us. And like that, you know, I know I can fellowship with these people. I can connect with these people. Uh, uh, it's beyond the surface level, you know, good, uh, you know, uh, uh, feeling of goodness. It's something in your spirit. Spirit to spirit connection. Um, and so you can connect. Uh, um, uh, knowing that a certain kind of spirit is operating. Uh, and it's okay. I know th this is how it is. And you, you go with it. <laughs> Sometimes it could be words or words of the different kind of spirit. You see those words. Deal with this spirit. Deal with that spirit. So God is showing you and then you begin to rebuke those kinds of spirit. Sometimes it's a visual that shows what is happening. And you begin to act according to it. So in the same pastor's meeting. I'm just giving you illustrations from this past week. Not from history. Just some stories from the past week. So in the same pastor's conference. Now you don't expect this in a pastor's conference. They're all leaders. They're people serving in church. Uh, we were all signing up for prayer. This was, I think, the second day. We were signing up for prayer. Okay, we finished our teaching. So I said, we'll just pray for some time. And I felt like, okay, let's start praying for healing, for minister, for deliverance in that area. So I just started, just hardly started. I said, in devil, I take authority over you in Jesus' name. The moment I said that, on the third row, and there's nothing wrong with people on the third row. <laughs> I'm talking about third row there. <laughs> on the third row, there was this man. And yeah, I started manifesting. And people got scared. The man moved out. He came right up in front of the altar. 
So like, this is leaders conference. <laughs> and this man's been in church, of course. But he's troubled by devils. And he's come right up in front and he is shouting, screaming, saying all kinds of things. Thank God I didn't understand most of it. <laughs> I had no idea. Shouting. It's so aggressive, so violent, coming close, has to hit me. And all of a sudden, then I was laughing. I mean, like, for me, like, kya mazake, you know. <laughs> Devil, I know you can't do anything. Right? Now, this is happening. Everyone is standing, all right, watching what's happening. Now, some guys open, flip up. Nowadays, phone. <laughs> so, somebody's out there already with the phone recording all this stuff. And this guy is shouting something. So, I started rebuking. I said, in Jesus' name, come out. In Jesus' name, I command you unclean spirits to come out. At that time, the Holy Spirit speaks. And he says, command him to get on his knees. Now, this is not something you'll read in a training manual. To cast out devils, get them on their knees. <laughs> it's not like that. It's what the Holy Spirit is saying to you at that moment. Now, honestly, I've never done this before. I don't like to be dramatic. Usually, just do it in a small, casual way. Set the person free, go on. I'm not given to dramatics. But I said, okay, if God wants to have some fun, let's have some fun. So all these people are watching. And I say, in Jesus' name, I command you, get on your knees. Oh, nothing happened. So I just repeat that two times. And then like a Hindi motion film, slow motion. <laughs> in front of the, at the altar, he drops to his knees. And everybody starts clapping. I'm like, God, this is not what I want to do. I mean, I don't, I'm not given to dramatics here. Right? And okay, wait a minute, I forgot the other part. So after I say, in Jesus' name, count to knees, the Holy Spirit says, count to three. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> i like, God, this is not me, you know. But okay, I have to obey what the Holy Spirit says. So I say, one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> and then it's low motion. He goes, and he drops on his knees. It's like, I was just like, oh, you know, so, so dramatic this is. And then he doesn't stop with that. He falls flat on his face. And everybody's, you know, wild and uh, clapping. And so... Uh, but the point I want to make is, you just have to go with what the Spirit of God is giving you at that time. So you're seeing in the realm of the Spirit. This is what the Spirit is saying. I have to deal with this evil spirit or spirits in that person, troubling that person. Now, theologically, you may say, was it in him or was it upon him? It's okay. Just get it off him. <laughs> get it out of him. Right? If it's inside him, on him, forget it. And, you know, he's serving in church. But poor fellow, let's help him, right? So you, the point is you go with what the Holy Spirit is saying. And even if it is something that you're not used to, I don't do this. I don't tell count, don't count to three to get devils out. But I don't tell people to fall on their knees to get devils out. But at that moment, you're going with what the Holy Spirit is saying, right? So uh, you're seeing a visual that shows what's happening and you just act on accordance to what you act and things will happen. Um, sometimes the, your eyes of those spirit are open to see what's happening. And there are several other ways. So how do you release what is received through the discerning of spirits? I'll just get ready to close here. You know, sometimes God gives this to you because he wants you to avoid further interaction with people that you've been alerted to. So there's a check in your spirit. Don't continue here. Just step out of this. Uh, you may need to be walk away from the company of certain people. God says, okay, you, know, you don't feel easy in your spirit, just walk away. And I've done that. Sometimes, you know, I've got invitations to come and preach here, come and do this. And they could be having big ministries. But in my spirit, sorry, I just don't feel comfortable. I'm not going. So even for preaching? Yeah. Why? It's not the size of the ministry. It's not who is inviting. It's there's something wrong about this. And I will not go. And I, I, I want to go where... There's that joy. There's that fellowship. It's beyond, you know, the outward appearance. It's what the Spirit of God is saying. So you may need to walk away. Uh, you may need to minister deliverance to the individual. So sometimes, you know, like I said, and so just praying for the headache, deal with the Spirit to bring healing to the person. Um, sometimes you may need to take authority of the kinds of spirits that are operating. God shows you, deal with these kinds of spirits. That these are the kinds of spirits that are actually troubling this person. So you deal with those very specific things. Um, or sometimes you may need to stop from progressing further. God is saying, okay, you know, this relationship is not good. This business partnership is not good. Their hearts and mood is not right. Stop. You say, okay, God, I'm backing off of this. Cannot progress in this, right? So the gift of discerning of spirits is very practical, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in business, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in the kind of company we meet, whether it's in the, you know, wherever you, 
this, the gift of discerning of spirits is very important. It will save you and save me, save us all a lot of heartache and trouble. Amen? How about using that for the, your life partner? Hmm, I discern. <laughs> so, you know, you discern by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's stand to feet, please. And we'll uh, just take some time to um, worship. But what I want to do now, I just want to encourage you all to practice this in your life groups, okay? I wish we could practice on Sunday mornings, but Sunday we don't have all the time we need. So I want to encourage you in your life groups, as you meet in small groups, your prayer groups, practice this. You know, you, it's very safe. It's okay to make mistakes. You ask somebody, do you have a headache? He says, no, I have a stomachache. Pretty close, you know. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. You know, then you know that, okay, that wasn't right. So you need to say, okay, God, help me get right. And how do, how do I hear from you clearly? So you practice this in small groups. And, 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 and then you begin to, uh, you recognize, oh, this is the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Okay, I got it. I got it. And then you, you know, you begin to practice more. And, and then you'll become really good at it. just learning to listen from God and bless people with words of knowledge and words of wisdom, the setting of spirits. Amen? So I encourage you, please, use these things, okay? It's not for intellectual knowledge that we're doing this on Sunday. It's to equip all of us that you can use this in your life uh, everywhere, anytime, right? So uh, I'm just going to take, just pray a simple prayer and just ask God to awaken our senses, to open our hearts, uh, make us alert to this so that during the course of this week, you and I can serve God anywhere. You might be in the mall, you might be in the re uh, restaurant or wherever. Uh, let God work through you to bless people. Let's pray. I'll just pray over us and uh, uh, we will close. Father, we thank you. Thank you, God, for all that you've made available to us, oh God. All that you've made available to us. Thank you, Father. And Lord, I just pray over each one here, Heavenly Father. I pray that you will awaken our spirit senses. Awaken our spirits. Open our hearts. Get us in tune with the Spirit of God. Get us into that place in the heart of God where we hear from you. So that we could just bless people, God. We could bless lives. Father God, I pray right now for everyone here who need, who are eager to move in these things. I pray you will awaken our hearts. Will awaken, oh God, us more and more to the things of the Spirit. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. I just feel like praying for just one condition about miscarriage. I, was, I wasn't planning on this. I was planning to close and go. But uh, as I was praying, I just felt the Lord saying, just pray for those who've had miscarriage. And, and uh, I don't know, there could be just one person here. There could be more people here. There could be people watching live. But you've had miscarriage, and that's really affected you. But I want to pray over you that just to give you hope, just to let you know God knows your situation, that there's going to be healing, and I want to release life over the womb. Father, right now, I pray for whoever that person is, whether it's one or more, God, who've had a miscarriage and who are going through that emotional pain. And, and I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, for a complete release from that pain. And you bringing healing and wholeness emotionally. And also right now I speak to their womb. I speak to the womb. I rebuke that spirit that causes miscarriage. I rebuke that spirit that disrupts what God intends for the womb. And in the name of Jesus I release life and I release blessing. In Jesus name. God let there be your healing power. Just touching that person. And we give you thanks Father. We give you honor and we give you praise. And Lord, use every person here to the work of our hands, through what we do in life. Use every person that Jesus Christ may be glorified through our lives. Help us to be risk takers. Help us to be lovers of people. To love people enough to take risks for them. To bless them. To serve them. To make a difference, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each one of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website, apcwo.org, for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.